Hello, I'm Zulfan from uh, University of Western Sydney. Uh, my question is to the paper on aid and inequality, uh, Latin America. Yeah. In the framework, uh, you showed that uh, the link between aid and inequality should be most likely through poverty reductions. But in the empirical uh, executions, uh, you see the direct effect. So I'm wondering why not uh, 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 formulating uh, a kind of two-stage process, so a kind of uh, uh, a reduction in inequality is the outcome of poverty reductions, and then poverty reductions is the outcome of, say, inflow of aid, for example, so, and see how the outcome would be would look like. So, so that's a short question. Thank you. And then back here. Thank you. I'm Christophe Muller from the University of Aix-Marseille in France. Um, I have a question for uh, Jose Maria and another one for for James. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jose Maria, uh, you, you, you showed some very interesting uh, graph about the channels, the possible channels of influence of aid on inequality. Uh, and I found that you don't exploit so much all the reflection that you had about this in the, in the estimation uh, output at the end. Uh, and I, I was wondering if, if, the, if there would be a, a, a way to, to do it more. For example, uh, so, something which is really um, puzzling in this, in this aid literature is that uh, we would like to look at the component of aid. Surely food aid and military aid, this is completely different for what you want to study. Uh, uh, naturally, uh, uh, the kind of data that you have doesn't allow you to do it always, but in, for some countries you, 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 you have this kind of information. You know it, you know, you know that at the time of a war when you get aid from the United States sometime, uh, it's not, it's not going to be food. Uh, not all the time. <laughs> uh, and another simple way to do it would be to introduce cross-effect in your regressions. Uh, you have a, a, a lot of variables, you have a lot of information on these countries. Uh, if you, uh, very simple things, you know, uh, 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 the label of aid uh, at time of, of uh, uh, civil conflict or, or, or military conflict perhaps means something else uh, than in another time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, I would like to encourage you to, to explore more this dimension that you have already uh, sort of. Um, James, um, uh, 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 I'd like to emphasize that these new methods are, are really important for, for a reason that you you don't mention, mention perhaps by, by modesty, but uh, there were a lot of data lying in most of the countries of the world about discrete ordinal characteristics which had been collected for ages and uh, which are extremely cheap to, to collect. Um, and people were wanted to, to, to use this data, but uh, you know, the equipment, the simple characteristics of people for, for following poverty, for monitoring poverty or monitoring social uh, programs, but in practice it was it was not really used because it was too messy to to complicate it so one of the huge benefits of this method has been to summarize this very important information by using uh, uh, counts of of deprivation and this is what is behind naturally that works only in situations which are favorable, which are probably most of the, 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 the empirical uh, situation. But if you have a country where you have people who are dying of hunger, and that's all, and other people who are not dying of hunger but are deprived, I don't know, say in health and education, in that case, your approach would not work uh, because the, the ranking would would not correspond to what you would uh, uh, do with if you had more information on, on, on uh, living uh, standard, living conditions. So, uh, and we believe that this special case, in fact, doesn't happen very often in, in, uh, empirically. We believe that there is a correlation between, between, between dimensions which is strong enough. Now, uh, what I want to say is that, so this method of using uh, Limited information, partial information in the form of discrete on, 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 on order characteristics is in fact an approximation of what you would like to do if you had 
a, a very accurate description of the of the conditions. If you had market, if you ca could convert everything, for example, in monetary equivalent. So it's an approximation, and I'm wondering if the the degree of approximation that you ask when moving from identifying the poor to introducing some transfer sensitivity uh, uh, in, your, in, in your measure, is, is, is it the same degree of approximation or do, are you asking something which is much, much stronger and that perhaps is, is, is a bit too much for the, the assumption? My comment is on the trade paper, uh, the f foreign aid and the inequality. There was a report almost two weeks ago by BBC that uh, most of the foreign aid to developing world, including Latin America, is badly misused. And there is huge corruption, so that uh, almost supposed to save like three million deaths, and yet it does not because of the bad use of the aids. How you as here we get a sort of um, foreign aid reduces inequality. How if you allow for the fact that um, there are negative effects of foreign aid, such as that the corruption index or, or any other procs that allow for the fact that the aid is also bad, not only for growth, but also might enhance inequality. Are you going to get the same results? Just like the way they allow for some factors, then the African dummy disappears. Thank you. Um, Judith Arusconi from the ILO. So my question is actually for the first presentation. I was wondering, um, when you look at the effect of EPL and the rigid disease and the changes, actually, on inequality and growth, have you thought about taking into account the degree of formalization of employment in a country? Because, I mean, we know that there are some countries where you have a large informal market, so because we couldn't, it was very fast, so <laughs> I couldn't see if, if, if you have thought about that or not. Thank you. Okay, um, I think it's the easiest on me if I just start, um, actually with Nato and work our way back up the table. Um, there's something I think for everybody. So Nato? Attention of the speed, I'm usually very, very slow. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, the, I made the point at the beginning that, uh, I mean, this is a total, uh, the exercise is, uh, is measuring the laws and it's the URI. Uh, there's very little effort to, to capture uh, kind of any kind of de facto and, and enforcement issues. And I'm, I think I mentioned at the beginning that uh, if they bite, if the formal sector is dominant, uh, then there is a direct, very clear link between the rigidity of these uh, regulations and in uh, uh, labor market rigidities, right? And I also, I think I mentioned very quickly too, uh, that that, that uh, effect changes across the distribution, uh, across levels of uh, per capita income, and particularly when, uh, you know, go down uh, per capita income uh, levels, I mean, the formal sector is much larger, uh, and therefore uh, this, uh, uh, the bite of these regulations diminish, and of, and of course affects, uh, you know, the, the, at least the size, I'm not sure about the sign of, uh, of the effect. I mean, that, that is a very, very important issue. I mean, there's some evidence that, uh, uh, you know, the, the role of enforcement is not uh, that severe, but I, I, I don't think it's, uh, you know, still very much at the beginning of, uh, of the discussion on enforcement, and, uh, and it's an important issue that still needs more research. I mean, the, the index is very humble. Uh, I mean, it's, or if you want to be not generous, it's ambitious enough as it is, but it, the focus is only, only, only on the loss, only on the day you Thank you for the, for the questions. I think that the first and the second one are um, very related. Um, I think uh, it has two, two dimensions or two parts. One, it's more related to, to uh, econometric technique or, or um, uh, a technical aspect. Mm, I'm not the econometrician. David Castells is the, 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 the 
my co-author is uh, um, who has deal with um, these um, controversies. Uh, I will pass the, the question to him. But uh, uh, I think that uh, well, it, we can try to use uh, to um, list a square uh, ordinary or, or to a step list um, squares. But uh, I think that the the uh, the main problem is we have to to select an instrumental variable. Um, if you don't have a very good instrumental variable for inequality, so you you can use or external instrumental variable, you can use internal instrumental variable. That is what uh, system DNM is uh, is doing. Um, I don't believe that internal instrumental variable uh, prove causality in strictly terms. But is what uh, we have when when we deal with uh, the numbers. So I think it is very interesting to to analyze the indirect and indirect effects, and we, we have to classify it by types, of, of course. Uh, I think the ideal uh, research program is try to analyze which um, program um, has designed specifically to reduce income inequality in each country. And uh, I think there's uh, it's, it's no way now, because uh, I, um, I suspect that uh, there will be any um, program uh, is specifically designed for uh, reducing uh, inequality as um, um, experimental evaluation. Um, and we only will have the impact of this program, not the, the average view or, or, or uh, the overall effects. Uh, but uh, <coughs> just for, for um, some possibly um, good result, we have detected that there is a high correlation between foreign aid channel to education sectors and the public um, expenditure in education in uh, Latin American countries. Um, this is not causality, this is not proof, anything is just a correlation, but maybe if uh, we can uh, think about um, 10% or 15% of uh, um, overall uh, foreign aid is uh, channeled to education sector. Um, we have to disentangle tertiary or, or uh, primary um, education, but mm, thinking on a, um, in a, in a um, mm, counterfactual um, manner, what will happen to these people or uh, zone or region, either foreign aid doesn't uh, enhance uh, the, the, um, the education level in, in, in that country or in that uh, region. Um, of course, there will be a, a lot of uh, cross effects. Uh, we don't have a very, very high uh, correlation in uh, our correlation matrix. So we, we, in principle, we, we don't think that uh, this is uh, a, very, um, a very big problem. And uh, we only, uh, for the third uh, uh, question, we only deal with, well, we, we don't deal with corruption. Uh, um, we only uh, contemplate uh, the, the, the political uh, regime through a uh, polity two index. That is a, a measure of the quality of the governance or the, or the democracy in uh, Latin American countries. Um, I think that empirically you, you, you can detect uh, how uh, the corruption can um, affect the impact of aid on, on, on uh, inequality. Uh, maybe be because we don't know how much aid is corrupted. Uh, but uh, there is a, a huge suspect that when foreign aid is channeled through elites or is captured through the elites of uh, government, they say this is not affecting, of course, the, 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 the inequality, or even is uh, improving inequality, because the earnings or the, or the incomes of, of the elites has, um, uh, has increased. Uh, maybe the, this will be the case, or it could be the case in, in, in Nicaragua. I know that in Nicaragua, most of the foreign aid 
is, 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 is over the table of the uh, Ortega's president. So he, he decides uh, what uh, foreign aid is going to every, uh, every zone or every sector. Um, this is the reason because some uh, donors, as Sweden, has abandoned Nicaragua. Uh, but I think this is uh, more related to uh, political problems than empirical problems. That's what I can say. Thank you. Hello? So, approximation. Yes, in certain ways. Clearly, it's a crude measure. Um, it's connected to real conditions, though, that people are experiencing. Compare that to PVP going up and down with someone's uh, time of day or some weather, you know. Uh, PVP has had a very serious prob uh, problem with the income-based approach because you are so out of control that these wide ranges can occur that are totally unconnected to what people are experiencing on the ground. And measures of this sort are concentrated on, to be sure, simple and crude indicators, and the result is not going to be that sophisticated in many ways. But it may be a better approximation from that point of view. That's just one way of viewing it. Um, in particular, in, in addition to that, the dimensions can be connected to policy directly, and that's how it's done in Colombia, because the interest was in terms of quality of jobs in the uh, informal or non-informal sector. That's one of the dimensions. Do you have a job in the formal sector or not? Also, quality of housing can be put right into there, and that's a big, important policy variable for Colombia, and that's why it's in there. So um, that makes it much more tangible and much more interesting, I think, for policymakers uh, as a result. It's also the organizing mechanism for the entire ministries, all the ministries dealing with poverty in Colombia. They get together in a room with the president every two months and look at the measure and see how success has been, you know, in each of the dimensions has been occurring or not. That's keeping your eye on the ball to get a job done. That's kind of interesting that you can actually do something about poverty, potentially try and change income in a short term in using uh, any sort of standard uh, uh, policies. Um, finally, the discussion of whether it's too much to expect that you'd be concerned with inequality within a measure of this type, I think you're probably right. And in fact, I'll go one step further. Nora Lustig has been uh, talking back and forth with different people as to why do we have these inequality-sensitive measures anyway of poverty. Now, that, of course, hits me in my heart, but that's okay. I can put up with it. Her point is that when you have a transfer between a poor person and another poor person, is that really where we should be focusing on policy? No. We should be looking at transfers from out there among the rich to the people who are poor. And those transfers don't need to be money. They can be other dimensions in public goods and so forth. So I think that's where the inequality <coughs> that's important is being realized in that kind of dispersion between the others and the poor. I have a question for her. Good. <laughs> In fact, I have a question for all three. I noticed that all of my colleagues here were talking about indices, like me. That was surprising. The first uh, colleague was talking about a, an index, I guess, that was quite interesting. I'd, I'm fascinated with measures of quality of jobs. I just think it's amazing when the World Development Report has an entire volume you know, on jobs and quality of jobs but never defines what it is. And so I think it's really important to have something that goes that way. But, of course, this is getting into a kind of back, backwards way because we're looking at, at, uh, at laws. But still, I was wondering if you did any robustness analysis with that and changing assumptions, whether <coughs> counting is good enough or whether you want to emphasize one or the other type of law more, and whether that would affect the results. That seems natural to look at. Uh, you had a nice concentration index, my fam you know, favorite Herfindahl index, kind of a uh, variance but with a little bit of size thrown in. Uh, I'll just ask a question. That disappeared in the second part of your discussion with perfect competition, of course. No, How do you reconcile those two parts yeah, of your paper? Uh, so I'll, I'll ask, ask that. And then finally, quality of aid. It seems like the Center for Global Development has a very nice measure of quality of aid. That's all they're talking about in so many uh, ways. So I would think you could get your hands on that and do a little bit of uh, discussion within your work. Thank you.
Thank you, James. Uh, so uh, I have actually shown the concentration indices for in the first uh, section of my paper in order to show that when the quota is removed for, or that there is any liberalization policy, then uh, I want to actually identify or I, I, I want to show that what happens to the market structure. And, uh, and that is the first stage of, or first step of my uh, presentation that the market gets concentrated. And then in the second step, we have shown that what is the final outcome of this concentration. So uh, concentration indices have not been used in the second part. Uh, and we only uh, uh, shown the, we have only shown the uh, inequality aspects and the theoretical justifications or theoretical substantiation of the uh, empirical verification. But uh, concentration indices are constructed in order to show that the structural features of the market has been changed because of this policy reform. Yes, uh, I, I know the index, uh, and even they, they, they have a quality of or in health or in, uh, in uh, agriculture. Uh, but I th think that the purpose is to compare across uh, donors. I don't believe that they have a figure for, uh, to introduce in the panel data. I don't know. I know uh, what the law defines as a, as a good job. Yeah, but we look at the, at the four components of the Botero index uh, to, to check whether or not they make a big difference, uh, which one you pick, and it's usually not the case. Uh, but I mean, that's obviously because you're looking at just just the laws. Uh, then, you know, I'm, I'm showing different regions in particular, I would, I would guess. Uh, enforcement issues will dictate that some of the components work better or not. Okay? Exactly. I mean, that's a natural. We started a little late, so I'm happy to let people vote with their feet if they want to go, but um, if there are one or two other questions that people have, um, I'm happy to extend the session for another uh, five minutes or so just to let people ask any burning questions that they might have for the, the speakers. So it's uh, speak now or go to your coffee, one of the two. It looks like go to your coffee. So let us thank the speakers very much for a fascinating session.